Conversations about mental health are happening everywhere. More people are saying they're affected by mental health difficulties. Many of them are young and they want more help. So among 17 to 19 year olds, uh, the mental health survey, so the government currently thinks that one in four 17 to 19 year olds have a probable mental health condition. You know, this isn't like some woke generation deciding it's depressed. This is GPs that are saying this generation needs more help, more help than we're giving them to. More help, but what kind? For some, it's antidepressants. Use has been rising here on here, and it's become a big part of the conversation online. BBC Radio 1. Hello, you listen to BBC Radio 1 with me, Katie Dickinson. Katie's a Radio 1 DJ who uses her platform to chat about her own experiences. One in seven people in the UK take an antidepressant, and until recently, Katie was one. I've always been really pro antidepressants, and I feel like that's the way on social media now. I've posted a picture of my antidepressants, all the comments were people saying, great, yeah, I'm going to be on them for life, they're great. Um, and that's always been my outlook. And now I don't know how I feel about them. I don't know whether it was a good thing we're going on them or not. Katie's decided to try life without pills for a bit, but her body's having a big reaction. I was curious, I suppose, about whether I needed them anymore. I've been hosting a radio show about mental health for years. So I'm like, surely you don't need this crutch, you know? So I thought, well, you know what? Try and come off them, see if you can do it. So I tapered off for about three months. I had a lot of physical side effects. I was dizzy a lot, had a lot of headaches. I can cope with all that, fine. What I couldn't cope with was the mental side effects. And I suppose my resilience just went, you know, were you warned about any of this by the GP when you started? No. Side effects when you're on antidepressants have been known about for years, but it's the conversation before you start them that I'm interested in. When you go to your GP and you've decided to go on antidepressants, do you get all the information that you really need to know? There are people for whom they're life-saving medication. But the other side is a 10 minute consultation with someone you've never met before with the pressure of someone who's seeing 30 people a day. Do good decisions about long-term medication happen in that environment? I think not. Medicating one in seven people, what does that say about our society? So these are the leaflets that you get inside the boxes before sertraline and citalopram which are both SSRIs, which are the most commonly prescribed antidepressant in the UK. Side effects should be somewhere. Yeah, the insomnia, dizziness, sleepiness, headache, ejaculation failure, fatigue, depression. They're supposed to treat depression. How many people actually sit and read through these leaflets? We've spoken to over 100 people the past month who have been on antidepressants and the vast majority of them say that they didn't know the extent of some of these side effects or how tricky and personal some of them could be. One of those people is comedian Elliot Brown. He started antidepressants when he was 14 and like any good stand-up, He's found a way to play it for laughs. So I looked on like the pamphlet that you get in the box, uh, and there was stuff I was expecting, like headaches and stuff, I was like, fine. And then further down, there was failed ejaculation, and below that was delayed ejaculation. How am I meant to know if it's failed or just delayed? Am I going to be hooking up with someone that looks like I've come early? And I have to be like, wait, that's from yesterday. Is that a difficult conversation to have with a sexual partner? You kind of have to address it. There's been times when, you know, can I say, can I say it takes a while to come? <laughs> yeah, it takes, it can, it, can take, it can take some time. And then, yeah, when your partner here with sometimes, no, that thought is, is because I don't like, find them attractive enough. And then that's the point where you have to kind of be honest with them and be like, I'm on antidepressants. This is one of the side effects of antidepressants. And to be honest, some partners don't mind that you take a little bit longer. <laughs> Not always a complaint. Do you notice a difference 
when you're taking antidepressants versus when you're not taking antidepressants in your sex drive? In terms of sex drive, yeah, it's a lot higher when, uh, when I'm off them. But you feel that that's a sacrifice that is worth it? Yeah, I don't think I'd be here without them. Why? Okay. Yeah, I think it's more important to kind of want to be here and be with your loved ones than uh, get lucky occasionally. Or for me, very rarely. <laughs> for Elliot, the trade-off is worth it. For many others, it's not. This is Connor, but that's not his real name. Like Elliot, he says he wasn't warned about potential side effects by his GP with catastrophic results. Antidepressants have had a profound impact on his sex life. So the first side effect was total genital numbness. Right. My penis completely lost sensation. It's hard to talk about this stuff, so Connor has asked us to shield his identity. I stopped taking sertraline almost 12 months ago and I still have numbness in my genitals. I'm basically asexual, I have no attraction to the opposite sex. When I considered myself to be a depressed person, I had a very healthy sex life. We know that kind of one in two people with depression will have some difficulty with sex. But we also know if you give medication to people, so you give antidepressants, there's evidence that up to eight in 10 people suffer from sexual difficulties with medication. When did you start noticing the side effects? Within 48 hours. The problem for me is that these effects have persisted for 12 months after stopping taking sertraline. What Connor is describing is known as PSSD, or post-SSRI sexual dysfunction. PSSD isn't recognised as a medical condition by the NHS, but these are just some of the thousands of people who say they suffer from it, and they say support for them is limited. It has completely um, devastated my life, frankly. I always wanted a family, I always wanted a stable relationship. Um, I used to be a very energetic, outgoing person. All of my ambitions have just kind of withered. So antidepressants have completely turned my life around for the worse. And I just live day to day now. Post SSRI sexual dysfunction. Generally speaking, if you have it, will last months. More often than not, will last years. And for a proportion of people who go on it, may last decades. Dr. David Healy has been sounding the alarm about this and other potential negative effects of antidepressants for decades. The risk on the drug is nine or ten times greater than the risk on sugar pill. In particular, he's concerned about prescribing these to under 18 year olds. Should kids whose brains are still developing really be given them at all? They'll interfere with your growth. They'll interfere with your sexual uh, uh, development at a key point when you're going through puberty and things like this. Uh, and we really don't know the consequences of doing that. Clearly, side effects from your own antidepressants can come as a real shock, but coming off them can be just as tricky. Like Katie Thistleton, she says she wasn't warned about how your body can become dependent on these drugs. I was lying awake last night thinking, can I do this? Do I need them? Mm -hmm. I was happier on them, less is the thing. Yeah. And I also think if I go on them now, I'll never come off them. I, I know that 100%. I cannot go through this withdrawal again. As we were editing this film, I checked in with Katie to see how she was getting on. She sent me this. So as of two days ago, I'm back on the Satanapram. I did nearly four months off it. I just tried so hard but I just couldn't cope anymore with the panic attacks at night. I literally didn't have a good night's sleep for four months. So I'm going back on on a small dose. Not looking forward to the side effects. I'm hoping that I don't get any new ones. I'm hoping that they're exactly the same as they did last time because actually I was, I was really good on them once the side effects had gone away. So yeah, that's where we're at. But remember, if you're thinking of changing or coming off your medication, Speak to your doctor first. Before we go, there's just one more person I want you to meet. She's been here all along, actually. This is my producer, Rachel. <laughs> so, I have been on 
a telegram for twelve years now. I'm thirty, which means that I was eighteen when I started. Because I've been on the medication so long, it's not something that's constantly on my mind. It's just part of my daily routine. Like I've been else, eating and sleeping and popping a pill before I go to bed. But making this film, it, it just got me thinking, I guess. I, I ended up on the phone with my mum last night and I was just talking about all the listed side effects, you know. I've always considered myself to be super forgetful and quite absent-minded sometimes. And that annoys me about myself, but you know, I'm, I'm asking myself, is that part of me? Or is it a side effect to a medication that I've been taking for a really long period of time? Um, and I don't know the answer to that, which is quite a scary thing. But I'm now in a place where I think I want to find out what lies beneath <laughs> the citalopram. And I don't know what that's going to be. It might be terrible. Maybe I'll be an absolute anxious wreck. Or maybe I'll find this new version of myself that I pure love. So I'm quite looking forward to finding it. If you're a doctor, under pressure, without enough time to see all your patients, and you're face to face with a young person who is clearly in distress, of course you want to help them. And maybe that means prescribing something. But we're told that in many cases people aren't being warned about the side effects that come with taking the drugs. So if you don't have all of that information, how can you make the right decision for you? And taking pills have become such a normal part of so many of our routines without us really knowing what effect they're going to have on us. They could save your life. They might change it forever.